Hi guys and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be talking about everything you need to know about disposable slash film cameras. Um, I personally use a disposable camera. I've never used like a relatable film camera, so I can't really speak on that, but I definitely know a lot about disposable cameras since these past two years that I've been using it. I think it's two years. Um, I have a lot of videos on film cameras if you guys want to check those out. I first started with my disposable project video, which is when like, uh, that, that was like the first one that I bought. Like I showed you guys me riding my bike to CVS and like buying that and bringing it back. And um, yeah, that was the first time that I ever bought a disposable camera and used it. I can't remember when that was. Um, but I think I've, I've bought like four or five since then, so I've definitely learned a lot using them. And I get a lot of questions on the videos where I show you guys my film photos. I think I posted like two of them where I just go through each of my film photo and tell you guys the stories behind those. Um, so I thought that I would just put everything into a video and kind of answer them all here so you guys have the information in one space. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna get started with the first question, which is kind of what do I use? And I use a Fujifilm camera, that's the little green one, I'll insert a picture up here. I know like a ton of celebrities use these, if you ever see a celebrity that has like a film um, photo account, I know David Dobrik uses it, Bella Hadid uses them, all celebrities, whatever, use this one, but I mean, that doesn't really matter, but <laughs> I'm just saying. But yeah, I use the Fuji Fujifilm one. To be honest, I only know like Fujifilm or Kodak and I used Kodak once when I brought it on my trip to Italy and when I brought it back and got it processed, they were all blurry. Um, now I don't know if this is because I got it processed at CVS because after that I stopped and I'll get into that later but I doubt it was like the way that I was taking the pictures because every single one of them turned out blurry so... Yeah, I don't know, I just doubt that I would do something to the camera consistently for every like 20 something pictures on that. Um, so I would recommend the Fujifilm disposable camera. Again, it's the little green one and just the Kodak just hasn't worked out the best for me in my opinion, but I know a ton of people that also love that one. Okay, so basically how do you use a disposable camera? Super easy, um, you basically just roll the little wheel at the top until it stops, you point, shoot your picture, and that's it. And on the Fujifilm, it has a flash button, which you have to um, switch up, and then you just take the photo, it flashes, but on the Kodak, you need to hold it or like click the button. Some things that I've learned while using film cameras is that you really wanna make sure that you're being mindful about your hand placement around the camera because I don't have anything rectangular. Let's just, let's just use this calculator. So pretend this like little hole is like the camera and a lot of times I'll be like, yeah, so let's pretend this little hole is the camera here. And a lot of times I would be holding the camera like this or like this and like this finger's here or something. And even though if you don't think it's in the way, there has been like a ton of photos where literally my finger is just blocking like the whole um, half of the frame and I'll insert some here. So you really want to make sure that you're being mindful of your hand placement because again, like you're paying for these to get developed and you only have one shot most of the time to get a good picture because I don't like to take more than like one to two photos per like um, positioning or frame or whatever because then you're gonna be stuck with like three photos that are literally the exact same thing. So you wanna be mindful when you're taking each picture and hold it just around the camera and click, make sure your fingers, make sure you're not like holding it like this because it just, you might get your finger in it and I've definitely done that a ton of times. So I still forget to do this, but just make sure that your hand placement is super mindful and away from the lens when you're taking photos. Um, I found that if you're in dark places, it's way better to shoot up close and in that like little distance suggestion that they give you on the um, camera package because I'll get, again, I'll insert more photos here, but I've taken a ton of photos in the dark or during nighttime where it's too far away and it's just the whole background is just black and blown out and it just doesn't look good and you're super tiny you can still see yourself but you're super blurry and it's just like literally 70 percent of the photo is black and this happened like for my first um 
disposable camera. I think it was a Fuji film, but I just took them so far away and I didn't get them processed at the right spot. So they were, the colors were way off. It looked like it had some weird filter on. And even if you are shooting in the dark and you do have the flash on, as long as you're up close and within a certain distance, they'll turn out so good. Okay, now for how I develop my photos. I used to go to CVS or Walgreens or Rite Aid, I forget which um, stores still do it nowadays, but I used to go to CVS and I would drop off my camera, you whatever, fill out the little paper, and then you have to wait about like two to three weeks before your pictures get back, which is, it's not bad, but I found a place that does it faster, so I would recommend you to go to a local photography photo processing shop. Um, literally just Google like local photo processing shop. I have one two towns away from me that is super close, but they also get my photos back in one to two days, which is, that's literally amazing compared to CVS who does it in two weeks, which is again fine and they're, it's not bad, but I would definitely recommend going to a local photo processing shop, especially since they use camera specific paper. I noticed that when I got my first um, little package of photos back that on the back, like the, not the photo side, it said like Fujifilm photocolor paper and it just makes the colors so much better. I'll show you guys, um, this is a picture of when I had my Fujifilm process at CVS. You can see that it's just super saturated, the colors are weird, it brings out like the reds and the yellows. And then here are them processed at the local shop and the colors are just, oh my God, they're so much better. Like I can't begin to tell you how much better they look if you go to a local shop that uses um, camera specific paper. And then for downloading pictures, a lot of you guys ask how I get my pictures onto my phone, onto my computer. How can you upload them to Instagram? And you can always just take them on your camera, but to get them really clear and kind of like look like they're scanned in, um, CVS should give you a CD of, or any drugstore should give you back a CD of all your files um, on that CD. And then you could al always just insert it into your laptop or I don't really know, you can't do it in your TV, you can't download it from there. So I guess your laptop and then download it onto your computer from there. But I know my computer doesn't have a little CD like insert. So I went in the beginning, I used to go to my library all the time and they had like, you know how you can use like your library's computers, printers, fax machines, whatever. My library had a um, little like scanner, photo scanner, paper scanner machine on the side. And I would just insert, sit there and insert my photos and do one at a time and scan them in. So I definitely recommend going to your local library and asking to see if they have a scanner there that you can use. Um, otherwise, you can always buy one of those tiny little scanning machines that just like prop up those HP scanners um, that are meant for four by six pictures and you could do those yourself. Or if you go to a local, um, photo processing shop. I know that you can ask for them on a USB or you can ask for them on a CD there too um, and then just get the plug it right into your computer and then download it from there and you can upload it anywhere. So some final tips that I have for you guys um, who want to get into film photos and want to buy disposable cameras because I know it could be it's not necessarily expensive because you can buy like two Fuji films I know in a pack for I want to say 19, I don't, I don't really know, or 18, like 50, it's the 15 to 20 range. So it would be seven to $10 per that one camera, but then you have to get it processed, which usually um, they do it per print. And mine usually comes out to like $15, 12 to $15, depending on how many pictures that they were able to print. Um, so it's not expensive, but it's definitely, in investment i don't know because you could literally take cameras or you could literally take pictures on your phone for free so it's definitely can get pricey especially if you get really into it and you're using it a lot so i'd recommend just getting a point and shoot case a reusable camera that you could insert rolls of film into and you could the rolls of film are so much more cheaper um when you look at it like down the road if you're buying them because i think it's i think it's Honestly, I have no idea. Let me search it up. 
Um, let's see. Because once you buy the... Once you buy the camera, you only have to buy that once. Then you just have to buy... Okay, they're showing me Trolls the film. When I search Rolls film... Yeah, so you can get 108 pictures for $25, which is... Let's do the math. So 108 pictures for $25. If you were to buy one camera, one disposable for 20, let's say 25 pictures, that's $10 for 25 times four. To, okay, so 40. This is, you would pay, if you were to buy disposable cameras, you would spend $40 compared to $25 if you were to just buy like the rolls of film and then reload it into a camera and that's not including the price of the actual point and shoot camera um but yeah you get them at um amazon i've seen them at urban outfitters all the time and yeah so i think that's all i have to say so yeah those were the most asked questions that i've seen on my film related videos and i hope you guys go out there and buy a camera and see what you can do with it and have fun with it um, I love seeing people's photos on TikTok now where they just like go through all of them and I've seen people use like one in a full day and there's just a lot that you can do with film cameras that it seems kind of like because there's not a lot of settings you can't do a lot but there's a ton that you can do with film cameras which is super cool about them and just know that when you buy one some of them might not come out like the way you wanted to and it might not come out the way you expected but that's what a film camera is about and you're never gonna know what they're gonna look like until you get it processed. If you guys like this video and wanna see more film related videos, um, I'll leave them here. I think they're here, but this is where I showed my first roll of film and this is my second roll of film. So I hope you guys watch them, like them, check them out. Um, if you do, give it a thumbs up and I'll make more of these.